everybody, it's Drew with Universal Audio, and welcome back to another episode of UA Office Hours. In this episode, we're going to look at SoftTube's Console One system and what it allows you to do with our UAD plugins, as well as our console app and your Apollo. Along the way, we're going to check out some amazing plugins that SoftTube has on our platform. And to guide us through all of it, we have Todd from SoftTube. So let's get started. Hey, Todd, thanks for hanging out with us today. Uh, for our listeners who might not be familiar with Console One, why don't you just give us a brief overview of what, what we're talking about here? Yeah, hey, Drew. Uh, Console One mixing system is actually two pieces of hardware. It consists of Console One and Console One Fader. You could use Console One on its own. You could use Console One Fader on its own. You could use Console One and multiple Console One Faders, so it's very customizable. But essentially what it is, is it is taking what we loved about analog consoles and giving you that access in a modern DAW. So it's giving you that recall, that, that control, that ability to change channel strips and swap out for different plugins. We can make things modular. So you have a shape section, you have a EQ section, you have a compressor section. We've captured the drive of all these famous uh, consoles and outboard pieces of hardware. And um, you could actually go in and build your own console. And what's great is due to the relationship that we have with Universal Audio, we can support a lot of the UAD2 plugins. So if you want to use, let's say, a Pultec EQ in the EQ section and then an LA2A in the compressor section, you could actually do all that and you could customize and build your own channel strips and save them, recall them. Everything becomes lightning fast and your workflow just becomes more fun, more tactile. And the result is we use our ears more than looking at the screen and using our eyes, which is essentially, you know, what we all know makes great music. Wow, that's pretty awesome. So you're telling me that you can take this single piece of hardware and simultaneously control a pull tech, a, a, a EQ, and then a compressor on the same set of knobs at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, and it's all mapped for you. I'm going to show you a bit about a bit about that in the in a few minutes. We'll actually take a look at a session and see how to use it. But the nice thing about it is it's all done for you. It gives you that UAD2 processing that we all love, that same exact sound quality, but it does the mapping for you. So you're no longer clicking and dragging with a mouse or a trackpad, but you're just reaching out, closing your eyes and using your hands, using your ears, and just getting that sound you love. But just with a faster workflow, it's more fun. And as I said, the work's been done for you. So there's no MIDI mapping or anything like that. Now, can you tell us uh, what plugins are supported? What 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 UAD plugins can I do, uh, can I control with my console one system? So we have a list on softtube.com of all the supported plugins because we do update that and we do keep that up to date and uh, add plugins from time to time. But essentially, console one is about mixing. It's about taking the place of a console. So we have a shape section, an EQ section, and a compressor section. So the UAD2 developed uh, products and softtube developed products on the UAD2 system that uh, that fit shape EQ and compression, those are the ones you're going to find there. So you're not going to find right. something like a delay or a, or a flanger. That's not part of what we would find on an analog console. It's the ones that fit this format. So tell me a little bit, this building your own channel strips, this is really intriguing because I think this is probably something that a lot of our users didn't know was possible. You know, um, it's, 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 it seems like a really unique feature. Yeah. I'll show you a little bit on my screen and then we'll do some listening later, but it, Using console one is pretty simple. It basically what you do is you put the console one plugin across all your channels in your DAW. And what I really love about console one is it doesn't matter if you're a Luna user or using a different DAW. What it does is it actually takes the the DAW away and it puts puts the focus on the console one uh, software. And so if I actually turn on my console one mixing system by hitting on on the display. We see this, and what we see at the bottom is all the tracks that we have in our DAW, and we could select the tracks at the bottom, and then we could start sculpting right away. So I know your question was, how do you go about building your own channel strips? Uh, I'll get to that in just one sec, but what you see here is that it loaded with an SSL 4000E channel strip, which is kind of the default of what console one loads with. Um, you have the ability to go in and load different soft tube channel strips, but to answer your question, I mean, we're here on a vocal, and if I want to go in and load a different EQ, I could just hit Shift EQ and select from all my different soft tube and UAD EQs. You can see the whole UAD list right there. If I want to load a different uh, shape section, I could hit Shift Shape, and we have all these different shapes available. Um, so shape is going to be like your gates and your transient designers, those type of things. And same thing with compressors. We have tons of different compressors, soft tube and UAD compressors available here. And what's interesting is uh, people ask me all the time. They say. Well, if I load a UAD compressor, is it going to sound the same as I, ex 
you know, as I'm used to when I just load it in my DAW typically? And the answer is, you know, it doesn't sound the same. It is the same. It's the exact same product pulling off the same DSP chips that, that you've always used from Universal Audio. But the difference is the control is now done on console one. It's all contained within console one. It makes it just a faster, easier workflow and gives you that tactile response. When you're looking at this interface and you're turning the knobs, they're actually controlling our plugins under the surface. Exactly. Yeah. These are not emulations of UA plugins. These are the UA plugins here. Yeah. So it's, it's control and it's a, con people ask, you know, why does, why does this exist? Why is it not just soft tube products? Why do we have this UA, uh, this UA kind of integration here, if we want to call it that. And it's, it's because of the partnership that soft tube has with UA. It's, it's a, a partnership that's been around for quite some time. Soft tube has worked as developers for UA and we've made a bunch of UAD uh, to plugins uh, that are available. And uh, because of that, there's a great relationship and we can work on making sure the products are properly supported. So Todd, why don't we uh, get into some sound examples? You can show us what the default settings are and how you could load in some UAD plugins along the way. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I've got a cool track here that I pulled up. Um, it's called Richmond. It's uh, by Guy Scott Fritz uh, from Stranded on Planet. Uh, I actually loved picking this because he's a console one and fader user, and he also is a UA user, so I thought it was just totally appropriate. But um, why don't we actually take a look at something where we should all start, which is vocals. Uh, we have two vocal tracks here. We could select them, track one and two. I'm going to hit group, group them together, and I'm going to solo them just to get an idea of what the vocals are doing and hit play. And I'm waiting up my time in Richmond. I hope she lets me go with ease. So the first thing I'll usually do with the vocal is just start with some low cuts and things. I'm going to actually load one of the soft tube channel strips just to get started, do a little bit of sculpting, and then start to integrate some of the uh, UA plugins and show you how to do that. And I'm waiting up my time in Richmond. I hope she lets me go with ease. And in return, I promise when I add a little not drive. to forget her. Oh, 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 oh. So I'm, I'm affecting both channels at the same time here. And everything's already starting to sound better. But, you know, there's a favorite compressor of mine, a favorite UA compressor. I'm going to hit Shift Compressor. And I'm going to come down to my UAD2 plugins, and I'm going to select the, uh, the Summit Audio TLA-100A. This is kind of like a, a staple vocal compressor in a lot of studios. Let's see how this affects our sound. And I'm waiting up my time in Richmond. I hope she lets me go with ease. Instantly you hear a kick in. I promise not to forget her. And just to get things sitting together, oh, I'm going to add some reverb and delay. Oh, And Todd, let's be clear here. You've not touched the mouse yet, right? You, I have not You've literally the not touched a mouse. That's that's pretty amazing. So you've you've grouped these it's, channels on the hardware yeah. and you've started to do all of this basic processing completely mouseless. Exactly, and that's what I love about it. I mean, we have a basic transport here, which is just three assignable buttons, but really the idea is just being able to come in and sculpt. And in this case, I want I just really wanted to use that Summit Audio Compressor. That's, that's just like a go-to for me with vocals. And being able to pull off that uh, UAD2 DSP is just essential for me. It gives me that sound that I love uh, from, that, uh, from that Summit Audio Compressor. And it was quick. This may not be where I leave the vocals in the final mix, but I just started to do some basic low cuts, opened up the high end, added some drive, got that compression on there, added a little reverb and delay, and things already sound better. That's pretty amazing because that's a mixture of soft tube plugins and algorithms and our UAD stuff, like all in the same interface. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I'll just take you a step further, if it's okay. Let me show you a little bit more. Sure. Um, I'm going to select uh, tracks four and five. I'm going to group them together. These are two acoustic guitars. So let's solo them. I'm going to hit play. And I'm, waiting up my I'm just going to balance my levels here with hope she fader. Me go with ease. So we could already hear that acoustic guitar. It sounds fine. But I'm going to come on in. I want a different EQ. I'm going to hit shift EQ. Once again, go down to my UAD2 uh, products and let's select the uh, Tone Lux Tilt. I'm gonna hit play and just start making some adjustments here just so we can tilt that spectrum so we get a little more high end and a little less rumble out of that acoustic guitar. So 
So that's really simple. But I know there's going to be way more to this track than just guitar and voice. And as I'm doing all this, I'm, I'm also using console one fader over here to balance between my vocal and my guitar, which is really great. Just being able to grab the faders and bring one up, one down while you're mixing. Uh, but what I want to do now is I want to put a compressor on that. And for this, because it's just kind of this nice finger pick guitar part, I'm going to load the LA-2A uh, gray. I'm going to add a little drive. And instantly, you just kind of hear things come together. The guitars come forward a bit. It kind of reduces the transients, evens things out. The vocals kind of sit nicely on, on top of the guitar here, which is great. That's exactly what we're trying to do. Once again, this may not be my final uh, place I sit with this mix, but this is a great way to get started, and we did it really quickly. So Todd, I noticed you don't see the user interface of the individual plugins, but you still get gain reduction metering, and you have all of those controls mapped out to these knobs. So, so it's a, it seems like it's a really intuitive way of, of being able to get all of the visual feedback that you need in this very clean interface. Yeah, the idea with Console One is that no matter what UA plugin or SoftTube plugin you're loading in, the EQ controls are in the same spot, the threshold, the attack and release on the compressor row is in the same spot, your high and low pass filters and your drive, all of it is always in the same spot, no matter what the plugin looks like. So it's about speed, it's about workflow, and you still get the sound quality as if you were just mixing with the plugin on its own, but everything just becomes faster and everything just becomes integrated. Um, on top of that, because we're working in this environment, we're able to kind of customize, as you see here, modularly the different, uh, the different channel strips. So in this case, we have the uh, shape section from the 4000 that loads in, but we customized uh, by using the Tone Lux Tilt and the EQ, and we have the LA-2A in our uh, in our compressor. And if we wanted to go in and save this as a preset, if this is like your go-to UA channel strip that you use on guitar all the time, then you could just go in and uh, you hit Shift, Save Preset, and you could save it as whatever name preset that you want. So you could easily recall it on every session. Oh, wow. So this is a, once you save it as a channel preset, regardless of DAW, wherever you are, you could be pulling up these channel presets no matter what? Exactly. And we have people that do this all the time. Uh, we have like these power UA users that go in and they'll, lo they'll load in like the API uh, gate in the shape. And then in the EQ, they'll put in a pull tech and then the compressor, they'll put in 1176. And they'll just do like straight up 100% all UA plugins, but with the control that SoftTube gives you that, that great workflow of just making everything easy and tactile and just fast and fun. All right, cool. So we looked at some vocals. We looked at some acoustic guitar. Why don't we, why don't we do some drums and bass? What do you got for us? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, let me just, I'm going to unsolo uh, my tracks here. I'm going to go in and I'll select on channel six. I have an upright bass. So let's go in and solo that. And I want to hear it against uh, my kick drum. Let's just start there because we're always trying to balance our, up, our, our bass and our kick together. So let's listen to what those two are doing. Okay, so... So for the upright, let's try and tighten up the low end, and then we'll try and find some of that finger attack in the top end and uh, really just clean it up and listen to it against the kick. So I'm gonna select EQ, and let's go in, we'll load the Poltec uh, EQP 1A. And this is great because we could really tighten up that low end and boost it at the same time, and then we could find that finger attack. So let's listen to these. So I'm gonna start with boosting it. Yes, yeah, so that's kind of where we also need to cut and... Perfect. That already makes a little more room for the kick drum. Let's find some of that finger tack in there. So, eight, let's see. Yeah, I think I like it at eight. I'm gonna back it off a bit. I just wanted to find exactly where it is. And here's another trick. We all think about the uh, TubeTech CL1B as being like this go-to vocal compressor. I'm an upright bass player. I love it as an upright bass uh, compressor. So let's load that in our compressor section. I'm gonna hit Shift, Compress, and we can load our CL1B and add a little compression to our upright. So that's a little heavy with a six to one ratio. All I have to do is back it off. Let's make it closer to a four to one. Yeah, now that already sounds better with our kick drum in there. 
And it's that simple. Uh, being able to load in a pull tech, being able to load in a tube tech CL1B, and then just have that instant control right there. So I soloed my overhead track, uh, just adding the overheads to our drums. So we have, uh, we have our kick drum, we have our bass, we have the overheads in there. Uh, let's take the overheads. I have the Empirical Labs track pack channel strip as my go-to for my drums. I'm going to open up the room sound using the SSL uh, 4000 uh, shape, shape section. So we're gonna just bring up the sustain a little bit. Listen to how the drums open up. And I'm gonna add a little bit of that Empirical Labs drive. And all of a sudden the overheads come alive. But let's take our EQ section. I'm gonna hit Shift EQ. And let's try a totally different EQ here. Uh, let's actually come in and select the UA uh, Chandler Limited Curve Bender. And uh, I know, Drew, you and I have talked about in the past, like one of the things that we love about Console One is being able to grab more than one knob at a time and being able to manipulate them. So one of the yeah. things I like to do is, yeah, it's, it's just like a, a total game changer. So I'll go in and I'll, I'll boost my bass and really just kind of find a little bit of body in those overheads, but also open up the top end and maybe just let the, the middle sit where it was because... I'm going to leave a little bit of space for my guitars and my vocals in there. We have the Chandler Limited uh, Curve Bender loaded in. Let's see what that sounds like. So you could hear the cymbals opening up, but I could also go in and boost my bass at the same time. And even cut kind of where we need a little bit of room in that mid. So like right there, I just did three moves that with a mouse would be completely impossible. Yeah, when you're reshaping harmonics like that, that it's all interwoven. You know, a, a, a movement in the upper mids will have impact on the perception of the low mids and, and vice versa. So that's that's really cool to be able to like kind of just grab knobs and turn them and just get that that sort of visceral reaction all in real time. That's super cool. And, and you know, I also do this with compressors too. Uh, probably less so with compressors than EQs, but let's actually go in, we'll load in a... We'll do the same thing. We'll do a Chandler Limited um, Zener Limiter. I mean, instantly you hear it come alive. We even get a little bit more like bump out of those drums. You know, this isn't a rock track, so it, it, we're not trying to make these drums explode, but one of the things that's really cool is we have a parallel mix knob right there, so we could even mix the dry signal back in. So I've, I've way over compressed these drums right now. I'm gonna back it off a bit, but then I'm gonna add some of the dry signal right back in without needing to create a separate dry uh, channel in my DAW. So, right. And that's it. I mean, it's that simple. It's you load in the channel strip you want, you customize it with the shape, the EQ, the compressor. We even have the ability to go in and load a separate drive. And uh, if you're like this power UA user, load in your, your favorite UA uh, plugins and you know save them as a preset and recall them just instantly for every session. So Todd, we've just scratched the surface of what can be done here. Uh, where, where should we go to learn more? Go to the SoftTube website. I do a lot of the videos for SoftTube in terms of the different channel strips and products and what they sound like and how they uh, work within Console One. Uh, but as you said, we just really scratch the surface of what the Console One mixing system does. You know, Console One, Console One Fader. I have a video called 10 Things You Could Do With Console One Mixing System, and it really dives a, a little bit deeper. Um, additionally, if you're considering Console One and Console One Fader, and especially if you're an Apollo user and you have questions about how those two work together, we actually do live demos uh, through SoftTube. You could go to the SoftTube uh, site and book a live demo with a, with, an in, with a person. So we've looked at a bunch of mixing scenarios, but Todd, why don't you tell us what you can do with Console One, uh, both with or without the faders in a tracking scenario? Like let's say you have an Apollo and our console app. What, like what are our options here? Yeah, so uh, right now what you see on my screen is the Console One view, which is, is just the mode for mixing. And there's a bunch of different views that you have here as you can see, but uh, I'm gonna close my my uh, display for a sec. And what you see behind it is the console 2.0 software, which is uh, what works with the UA Apollo. And if I turn my display back on and I hit shift mode, it's gonna take a quick second and switch from the uh, console one mixing system to something we call Apollo Central. And 
this looks maybe a little unfamiliar at first, but it's super easy. And I'll show you what it does. First off, uh, for those of you that are using Apollos, you're gonna love this. You can grab console one fader and control your volumes right there, which is super awesome. Something that people have always wanted to be able to do. It's available to you. You could solo channels, you can mute channels from console one or console one fader. You could control pan by selecting a, a channel at the top and then uh, using your pan knob to control a pan. Um, but what's really cool here is being able to load a UAD2 plugin and use it, uh, use console one and console one fader to control it. And I'm going to show you kind of how to go about doing that. Let's take a look at channel one, uh, the one we call analog one. You can see it's selected here and we could select between our different channels. And if I want to load a Unison plugin, it's super simple. I hit shift one and it'll load a Unison plugin on whatever channel is selected. So an example that I love to use is let's take the API vision channel strip. I select it and you can see that all of console one is populated with our different controls from the vision channel strip. Uh, and they all lay in places that make sense. So our EQ is in the EQ section, compressors in the compressor section, shape is there. And if I close our display, I can show the UI or the GUI of the product. You can see it just popped up and I could come on in and control multiple parameters on my API vision channel strip. Oh, wow. So in this, in this case, you've got the option to either use, you know, the standard user interface or stick with that nice clean view that we saw before, right? It's kind of, it's up to the user how they want to interact with it. Exactly. And you know, the big thing here is that being able to control more than one parameter at a time is something you cannot do with the mouse. So being able to just grab two knobs, especially when EQing a vocal or something and just finding that sweet spot. You know, we were talking about this with mixing before. It's the same thing when tracking. You're tracking through the vision channel strip and yeah. you're trying to find that perfect spot. Do it. Just reach for it, grab it. It's like a real console. Yeah. What about the quintessential one would to me is the 1176, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 you know, adjusting, you know, I've been using the real hardware for years and a, you, you just naturally want to adjust that input and output together at the same time. So you can, you can do that while looking at the GUI that you're used to. So that's, that's really powerful. The cool thing about uh, console one and uh, Apollo central is it's no longer just about shape EQ and compression. So for example, let's say uh, we're not using the API vision channel strip, but I'll give you an example that uh, actually comes up quite often. Uh, I have a guitar player in the studio. They're plugged directly into my Apollo and I want to load in an amp so they could record directly through an amp. Let's load the blues breaker. So if you take a look, we've taken the bottom row and I can move my bass middle, treble, then my loudness and my other loudness, they're all lined up right in a row. And on the row above that, I have the ability to come in and affect my tremolo. So when we have something that's not a uh, console style product, like the Blues Breaker, uh, what we do is we take a look at the UI and we say, what makes the most sense from a uh, user perspective? And what's great about this is I have so many guitar players that come in and even though I'm tracking them, they want to touch the amp, right? They, they <laughs> guitar play, they, you course. know what I'm talking about. They just Hell love yeah. to play. They they want to grab a knob. They want to hit a chord, and they they're just so used to fiddling with knobs. They they don't want the engineer taking care of it. So, I'll just take the console one, put it in front of them, and say, okay, here's your here's your knobs. And the thing about this is the knobs that are mapped light up for you. So you could actually tell which ones are mapped based on what's lit up. So it becomes super easy to right, figure right. out what you're controlling, and it, it's awesome. Once again, you can control more than one parameter at a time, which is is just magic. Obviously, we're not limited to only Unison plugins. We could uh, insert uh, different inserts. So here we are in channel one. If I wanted to insert into the first insert slot, I'd hit Shift 2. That's our first insert slot. And we could load any of our UA plugins right there and get that same exact control. And it's such an extensive list. Uh, but I have another video that you can actually go and watch on the SoftTube site that is very methodical. It teaches you exactly how to use Apollo Central. I would start there to really just see how to maximize things. Um, but I'll, I'll show you something else that's cool. Uh, a lot of the times I'm recording a vocalist, let's say, and I want to, uh, I just want to give them some reverb in the headphones, right? So uh, a lot of the times I'll use my auxes for that. So we have this empty aux one, as you can see. And let's go in and put a reverb in there. So I'm going to come on in. So a lot of the times I'll, I'll load in the pure plate, which is great. I'll just plug it in. You can see we have the control there and there's only a few knobs lit up because there aren't that many controls, which is what I really love about it. It's just kind of like plug it in and go for it. Uh, but where the magic is here is I want to now send my analog one to that pure plate. 
And I could actually do that by using console one fader or console one. And if you can see, as I'm bringing up my fader here, I could send to aux one or aux two. Nice, so it's got like a, it's kind of got like, it's got a flip mode, right? We're flipping the knobs down to faders, that's cool. Exactly, and another thing you could see is if I hold send three, I could actually set my cues up. So I could actually send some signal to my cues and start setting up headphone mixes. So this is super cool. Um, people ask all the time, do you use Apollo Central? And I'm gonna give you the honest answer. The, the honest answer is yes, I do, but I don't necessarily use it on every single session. Now, why is that? Uh, there are some sessions where I just plug directly into my Apollo. I just, I just record and then I had to quickly bring something up and go for it. Uh, but there are other sessions where the artist really just needs me to kind of fine tune every little thing. And this, once again, just like mixing mode, is just so much faster, uh, just so much more about using your ears, like you were recording through a real analog console. And then, as I said, being able to let the artist come in and make some adjustments on their own without having to touch a mouse and you know, hit save or screw something up or close your session without saving or, you know, all the stupid stuff that artists do. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, giving them a little bit of control to come on in and just like as if they actually plugged into a real pedal and it's all right there on your Apollo. That's that's magic to me. And it's like, here's your mm -hmm. pedal. It's right here. Go for it. Set up, plug your guitar into your Apollo XAP or Apollo, you know, twin or whatever you have and just get that control right there. That's for me, that's the big magic. I mean, it sounds to me like it's pretty comprehensive. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing you talk about con instantiating and controlling unison plugins, instantiating and controlling regular insert plugins, adding time-based effects using sends and, and adjusting your monitor mix and your cue mix. I mean, that, that feels pretty comprehensive to me. I, I, I'm trying to think of uh, tasks that you might need during a tracking session that aren't covered here. And it, it sounds like, it sounds like it's all there. Yeah. I mean, if you could do it with a mouse and, uh, and the Apollo, uh, console 2.0 software, you can do it with, uh, Apollo central. And that's, that's what we want yeah, to do. We cool. don't make it, yeah, we don't make you change your workflow, but we give you access to make your workflow easier. And we, you know, believe it or not, we actually see these live people will use them on stage. They'll use their Apollo nice. as like a mixer and, and run a keyboard or a guitar and through it. And this becomes like a pedal board. It's, it's super cool. Awesome. So we've seen all sorts of really cool workflows, things you can do with your console one system and UAD plugins uh, and your Apollo and our console app. I uh, want to thank Todd for spending some time with us today and showing us all this cool stuff. I uh, want to remind everybody to subscribe to the Universal Audio YouTube channel so you're notified when we create new content like this. So Todd, anything you want to add uh, before we sign off here today? Uh, no, I want to thank you guys for having us. Um, it's, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure having the partnership with UA. And you know, if you own Apollos or you uh, or you're just considering just enhancing your mixing workflow, you know, start with console one or, or get console one in, console one fader and just see how it feels. It kind of takes the great work that Universal Audio has done with the uh, Apollo interface. And it just, it takes it a step further in terms of giving that hands-on control and just really making it feel like the old days of an analog console, but with the modern workflow that we all need to work with these days. Yeah, yeah, I think you did a great job showing us that today. And uh, thank you again. And uh, we'll see everybody next time.